Yo guys, what's up and welcome back to the Marvelous Chats podcast. This is episode 63 of the cast. Tonight on the cast we have Hoffman and Saberwolf and myself, Finto182. We're going to go through The Boys, episodes 1 to 3 that just aired this week on Amazon Prime. And we're going to talk about Obi-Wan Kenobi episode 3, which was on Disney+. Plus. Without further ado, I'm going to bring the guys in. Yo, what's up, dudes? Hey, what's up, Finto? What's going on? What's up, guys? How are we? How was the week? The week, it was good, man. Um, there's just so much content to watch now. I feel like I'm behind on literally everything. And I'm like trying to, you know, steal hours away here and there to like watch the boys, watch Kenobi, watch Stranger Things. Like I'm just, there's so much going on right now. I binged Stranger Things and I'm kind of sad that I did because it was just so good. Um, and each episode felt like an 80s horror movie. It was just, oh, the pacing of it was incredible. It was like, they were my favorite episodes ever. Um, mm. So yeah, and like, as we go on, like next week, we've got Miss Marvel to add to the pile of shows as well. So <laughs> it's just, it's yeah. just constantly getting longer and longer. I, I, I honestly- Explosive amounts of content. I can't believe that they have Miss Marvel and they have Obi-Wan Kenobi running at the same, on the same day. It's, wa- it's wild to me. Really that, that feels a little weird. Uh, I, I, I like the idea of doing it like, you know, them in the same week, having multiple shows coming out on Disney yeah. Plus in the same week kind of feels good. Uh, the same day. What, the, what are we doing? Yeah. Like it, it would seem like a business thing that they would try and do is maybe try and take over Fridays from Amazon, like from the boys. Mm. So like maybe put out uh, Obi-Wan on Fridays, like, you know, and just try and see if they could steal some of the, uh, the, the numbers, the Friday numbers. But I don't know. They just want to share it between themselves i don't know why they don't do like tuesday and wednesday or something i don't know it's crazy to me or at least wednesday and thursday like do it back to back from there i I've, I've heard so many people talking about it and it's like you know there's a lot of creators that will do watch parties the second the episode goes live so they'll be up at like midnight or 3 a.m in the morning and it's like they've, they've said like i'll watch kenobi i'll stay up for that but i'm not gonna watch miss marvel straight after like you know what i mean it's like gonna go to yeah. bed after that so yeah it's interesting I- so we'll see what happens I still don't like Disney's like midnight release, like midnight on the West Coast of America is like when they want to release it. Mm. I don't know why they don't do like five o'clock like in Europe or five o'clock on the East Coast, like something like that to where it's like <clears throat> you don't have to be up in the middle of the night so you don't get things spoiled for you. Because like literally I'll wake up, check my phone um, and <laughs> spoiled. It's like I can't look at anything because people are all over these spoilers right now, yeah. uh, especially on like TikTok. Like you got to stay off TikTok if you don't want spoilers. I'm nowhere exactly. near social media the day of something important like Kenobi. I'm like, my phone is for text messages only. I'll talk to people that I know. And I, I'll even only talk to people that I know haven't seen it. You know what I mean? Like, there's a mm-hmm. couple of people that will text me straight away. Have you seen the episode yet? And I'll be like, no, I'll talk to you later. <laughs> you know, so um, <laughs> <laughs> I don't even want any, like, like mistaken slip ups. Like, you know, I'm like, I'll talk to you later. I'll let you know once I've seen it. You know, so, yeah. Um, listen to spoilers like bro luke yeah. just showed up with the lightsaber it's crazy <laughs> <laughs> oh my god so yeah this week on the cast guys we're going to talk about the boys amazon prime season three episodes one to three i absolutely love the boys it's one of my favorite shows i just i and like even i i, I always think there's no way they could top what we've previously seen you know like there's no way that they can do it but Jesus, this season started off with one of the most insane scenes that I think I will ever watch on TV. I don't think yeah. TV will ever get more out there and more extreme than what we just saw. So uh, a quick spoiler alert for anybody who hasn't seen the shows, <laughs> but we're going to talk about the three episodes and kind of go a bit deep. But yeah, the first episode starts off and it's just there's a guy who has the powers of Ant-Man. He can shrink down or he can blow up real big. And he literally... Might. Yeah, he literally shrinks. Yeah. He literally shrinks down and climbs inside his boyfriend's <laughs> yoke and yeah. is like running through his manhood. Yeah, running through the shaft as if he's running through a cave. And he, they're taking drugs, and he accidentally sneezes. And when he sneezes, he expands to his normal size, exploding <laughs> his boyfriend. And I'll not like. Honestly, bro, like, you know, I've seen a lot of weird shit in my life, you know, and I've, I'm open to watch anything. Like, you know, the more, the weirder, the better usually, usually for me, you know, but I, I remember I looked at my girlfriend after when we were watching this, so I was just like, what the fuck did we just watch? I'm sorry. Like <laughs> what just happened? You know, it was just insane. What yeah, do uh, you guys think of it? That scene is honestly the best season opener we'll ever get from a show ever. 
Uh, I, I like, you know, I'm like, I, there's no way the boys like last season, the boys did the whole whale thing, which yeah. I thought was the most ridiculous scene I've ever seen on TV. And then here they literally are just have the camera sitting on like a gigantic wiener. Like it's yeah. just sitting there on screen. <laughs> and like, first off, why can't Marvel do CGI this good? That thing looked like amazing. It looked so good for its size. It was so nice, dude. I'm not going to lie. Oh, my uh, God. And then, him, like, you know, I the idea of them dealing with, like, insertion finishes, him yeah. running into it, and just yeah. like, oh, my God, man. The biggest japs then, I ever, ever captured on camera. <laughs> Oh, dude, it was nuts. It was absolutely nuts. Mm -hmm. Like, and I, because I saw there was like few people kind of terrorizing back during like the end game times where they were saying, like, why didn't Ant Man just shrink down and go up Thanos' ass and then expand? You know, and it's like, that's, yes, that. that's what they, that's what the boys obviously heard the, all these things. They're just like, let's do it. Like, and one thing I love mm -hmm. about the boys is just how they so blatantly like just take ideas from DC and Marvel and just like don't give up shit like they're like we're gonna just rip this off completely and like the show starts off with the trailer for the seven uh dawn of the seven which is like you know dawn of justice and it's like they even go as bold as doing like the rourke cut or bork cut or whatever your man's name is the director <laughs> like they're literally taking the snyder cut like and even like soldier boy coming in is clearly captain america homelander is like an evil superman like it's just mm. so obvious but i just love the way they do it it's just so good um, well, it, it, it's amazing how they have like the the facade in the front, and then you see Bork and Ashley in the toilet, and you're like, "I'm yeah. a fraud!" Yeah. I'm a fraud. <laughs> <laughs> oh, dude, there's just so many wild moments in those first three episodes. Um, what do you think of like Butcher uh, taking the temporary V or whatever they call it, where like he's going to become a soup for 24 hours? That scene where he was fighting, and um, what's his name, Payback or whatever. The yeah, oh, Gunpowder. Or Gunpowder, Gun sorry, yeah. Payback was the name of the full team, sorry. Yeah, so when he's, like, fighting him in the car park and he starts punching all his teeth out and everything, and then he, like, mm -hmm. chops him in half, I was just like, oh, my God, this is fuck, This is insane. It's absolutely insane. It's just, oh, bro. Like, and, like, what's... My girlfriend said to me, and I, I kind of agree with her in a way, she's like, can we just stop watching people explode now? Like, I, I've seen it enough. Like, they don't need to just <laughs> constantly explode people. And I thought the same, but then I thought about it, and I was like, I was like to myself... But that's what would happen if there were superheroes around. Like, you know, we're, like they're so superior that we would just be like bags of meat to them. That like, you yeah. know, you get punched by Superman, your entire head is exploding. Like, you know, so I suppose it makes sense. But yeah, I do understand what she's saying. Like, it's like, it is a little much. Like my parents watch this show and I'm just like, I love know, it. I, I, want, I want more of it. Like, yeah. when they, and like first, I think that they're have gotten so much better at the way they're showing like damaged bodies and blood flowing. It looks amazing this season. Yeah. Uh, you know, the opening scene where like, you actually see the guy's like heart from like his insides being ripped open and like the blood flowing and stuff oh all God. the way to, you know, the scene you're talking about where like he cuts the dude in half. Yeah. Uh, that is just, it is, it's so visceral in this world. Like, you know, we're in this huge comic book world uh, with Marvel and DC movies and all this. And this is the only chance we get in live action to see you know what it would really be like how raw it is and it's just in your face it's like it's a it's a horror movie almost yeah that we're watching uh, and i i dig it so hard man absolutely yeah it's all the all the damages that you actually get to see like that you never really like get accustomed to in in other movies like you know all these damages that are going on and then there's star like yeah what do you expect? Like they just destroy a building and then they don't get like flagged for it. Like this is actually showing like all the consequences that show up on there. And I love it. Like I love all the consequences that we see and all the gore and, and whatnot. And I couldn't ask for more. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I just love the concept of it being the real world. And this is what it would be like politically if there were superheroes and stuff like that and the whole marketing side of it you know let's make money let's sell toys yes. all this sort of stuff and it's just it's so good it's so good because i'm like i'll never forget watching the first season just like this is actually what the world would be like if superman was real like you know the homelander would be it like you know it's just crazy i love it absolutely love mm -hmm. it um, what was and what was your what was your favorite scene if you, could, if you could pick a scene out of the first three episodes because as I said before, as I said to you guys before we went live, you know, I find it very difficult to, uh, you know, categorize what was in what I saw in what episode when I when I binge watched like three hours of content, it's kind of just all mashes into one big mm -hmm. long experience for me. So like, I couldn't tell you, you know, what happened in episode two as opposed to one and three. 
Three's a bit easier, I suppose, because it was the last one you watched, like the whole thing with the deep and stuff. Oh my god, bro! Oh god, the deep, <laughs> the deep eating that like squid or whatever, or the lobster, or no, not lobster, whatever it was. It was like, was it a the squid? Octopus. octopus, yeah. Um, yeah. oh, dude, and like yeah, that, that was scene, intense. That sex scene he takes is it in his mouth. It's like it's praying. Oh, that's yeah. <laughs> oh, Jesus, bro! It like, has a family. Yeah, like if there's one thing I could take away from the series so far is. My favorite scene so far was the scene where Starlight threatened to release the video to Homelander and Homelander just went fucking dark side. Just went like, release it. I'll destroy the Eastern Seaboard. I'll like take out New York. You know, I'll just do whatever. All, all rules are out the window. You know, you want to do it? Go ahead. I like being the good guy, but I'm being feared is also fine by me. And I was, that blew me away. I was like, wow. Because like, mm-hmm. I know in kind of like interviews and stuff and what like the showrunners are saying that is like you know uh soldier boy when we kind of see him kind of going fully like we're gonna like he makes homelander look like a boy scout i think that was like one of the official tags when they first like cast jensen eccles they were saying like this guy's gonna make homelander look like a boy scout and i was thinking wow so like in my head i'm thinking does does Homelander have to kind of turn good and start working with Butcher and stuff to take down Soldier Boy? I'm like, that's my kind of prediction of what's going to happen in the show. Um, but the way, but that's that scene just threw me completely off because I'm just like, geez, like, you know, like Homelander's ready to go full blown, you know, Lex Luthor, like, you know. <laughs> mm. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, for me, I think my favorite scene out of the first three episodes is probably on the rooftop when Homelander is, uh, he shows up to save the girl who's like going to commit suicide. Yeah. Um, and nice then, scene. like, yeah, he like he breaks. And what I think the show has done so well is where other shows just kind of have like the character like just kind of have a mental break and like it doesn't feel like it's earned. It's like, OK, yeah. they actually kind of show it in the first, you know, leading up to that. You really get the sense that like Homelander is at the end of his rope. Uh, everything's built up and he snaps and then he just, you know, lets that girl know like, hey, you're going to jump and like, <laughs> you know, the way they, they do the cut down to the uh, bot workers. And they're like just doing their social media stuff and the body just hits the oh, ground. Yeah. Like great, great direction, great writing. Love that scene so much. Yeah. Yeah. That was crazy. Well, that was my favorite. So I'll I'll pick gotcha. a different one. There's <laughs> <laughs> you have to um, pick another mine one. Mine had <laughs> mine had to have been like the actual like scene where we got to see what Black Noir looked like before he yeah, got uh, that was his really face cool. messed up. It was mm. it was brutal. And I, I felt sorry for the guy because he was just he was just an aspiring like yeah. character. And his face gets gets mauled, and then it's like, oh, so that's why he's always wearing the helmet. Yeah, I like the and, way Vought were like, no, you're going to keep the helmet on, that's who you are. And he's like, I want to take the helmet off, I want to represent black people and stuff. And then the poor man is forced to wear the helmet. He has no choice now, you know. And then Vought's mm-hmm. obviously thinking, oh, this is great, like, you know, you know yeah. they just get him to... Yeah. They get they get what they want, but he unfortunately has to kind of bow down because he's so deformed, like, his, oh my god, his eye so many like it, uh, like awful like gory like pieces of that show that just stick with you as well like i'm thinking about that guy's face now and it's it makes me shiver like it's, it's brutal yeah mm. yeah for sure yeah and, and isn't isn't it really funny like i thought it was really funny that mid story when the explosion started going off and people started dying they're like wait hold on they cut it <laughs> butcher's like i need to take a shit brb like <laughs> <laughs> I just think yeah, they just they have the comedy down to a T. Like it's like, oh, hang on a sec there, lads, put the story on hold there for a second. I need to use the bathroom. Like and then it does, it just stops altogether. We just go follow Butcher for a bit. Oh, it's so funny, bro. Like I've never seen a show do stuff like that before. It's so fresh mm-hmm. and it's just it's just so original. Even though yeah, the characters and- are complete ripoffs. But the, the concept of the show and the storytelling is just so original. Yeah, and the the writing is so phenomenal. This is stuff I wish we got in the MCU where you know, the MCU has always been known, and the Marvel, really specifically in the comic books, are known for humanizing their characters and not having, like, godlike, you know, superheroes, but, like, showing you, you know, the behind the scenes when they're at a bar, when they're in a relationship, when they're on a date. And that's something we don't really get in the MCU. It's, you know, even though they get credit for it, we really don't see it. But in the boys, you see these, like, actual relationships that these characters are in and, you know, how they interchange, like, the their actions have effect on other people's personal lives. And they feel guilt for like who they are and their mistakes they make uh, on a personal level. And that's just something I like it, it really endures boys uh, as a show. Like, you know, the kind of the gore and the, the absurdity of it brings you in. And then this writing where they really connect you with all the characters. 
on a human scale is just like yeah it's what makes the show so as good as it is yeah Mm -hmm. absolutely like if i was dc comics right now or like dc movies anyway like warner brothers and discovery i would be taking as many notes from this show as possible and i would be going because dc have a lot of dark content a lot of really good stuff Mm -hmm. like some of the animated movies are really dark like the killing joke and stuff like that like where you know barbara gets crippled and stuff and even just death in the family where he kills jason and all like if you could do really kind of gory movies where you just didn't care if it's like a rated or or you know like a high rated movie and just go to town on it i think movies like that would just be so good and dc have that freedom to kind of split out movies like you know we can have aquaman and it's kind of like childish and fun and colorful but then they have batman and you know it's they're they're different lanes they're in different lanes they don't have to worry about everything matching up if they don't want to like look at the joker movie like that's like such a um such a like kind of like psychological like Mm -hmm. roller coaster of a film like you know it's so dark and when he's like talking about like killing people on the talk show in that movie and all it's just crazy like you're just watching that movie and it nearly puts you into a depression after watching that film it's just such a heavy film to watch but that and they're the best movies that dc do you know so like yeah Uh, they should just go full send on it yeah and i like i could see how the boys relates more so to DC than yeah. Marvel because when you think about it, like the greatest difference between DC and Marvel is exactly what Hoffman said. Hoffman said that there's humanized characters in Marvel, whereas like with DC, they are gods. That's why there's there's an actual comic series called Injustice, and then there's even a game like Gods Among Us because those are characters that are literally literally godlike. Yeah. And so when you see that humanized like into the boys, and you see that all this like gruesomeness involved with it that's that's exactly what what i see dc possibly doing in the future just like you said finto and and i think it i think they can make it work it just can't be as gruesome or as crazy but i i think i I really think that they should yeah you imagine if you saw like dc black label show up when like in the movie theater it's just like dc black label you're like oh here we go that's they should they should do they should like some of those like some of the black label stuff is some of the best stuff that i've read in a long time You know, I'm a big, big DC Comics reader, and, like, the Black Label Batman stuff is just mind-blowing. So good. Mm -hmm. So good. Mm -hmm. I agree. Um, Yeah, do you guys have any predictions for where you think this show's going to go? I know I kind of said mine, but... Ooh. um, Some of the importance, I think, I feel like it's going to die this season. Like, one of the boys is actually going to go. I hope it's not Tamika, or whatever her name is, uh, the Asian lady, Mm. uh, who, by the way, is, like, acting her ass off in this show... Yeah. And like, just had me the entire time. Uh, but yeah, I think one of like the main boy characters, uh, one of them has to die, I think, in this uh, series to make it feel dangerous still. Cause, you know, they are going up against these like superheroes uh, who could just annihilate them and no one is dying. So yeah. it feels kind of a uh, little weird, but we'll see. I wonder, will like the yeah. Russians take out Frenchie or something? Mm. Yeah. And, and it's kind of like foreshadowing that kind of situation as well, because you see that Marvin is having the worst time right now because he just revealed that soldier boy killed his parent, his family. Mm -hmm. And then you see that Frenchie has to deal with little Nina because of what, you know, that lady did and he believed her. And so it's now this like crushing moment of like, well, someone's got to betray someone. And one of those guys has to die. And I really hope it's not Marvin. I like Frenchie, but I love Marvin. Like that, that character is amazing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. He's been through so much. I think it would be, kind of bad of them to kill him now like when he's trying to like rebuild his relationship with his daughter and stuff like that and get out of the game that'd be really tough i think like mm-hmm. but what about the... you? any predictions from you finto uh, i just think that i think homelander is gonna turn good that's my prediction mm. i think homelander is gonna have to team up with butcher and the boys to take down soldier boy I really think that's where it's going. I think Soldier Boy's going to come back maybe in the next episode to, like, our time. We've actually, we've seen it in one of the trailers already. He takes off the mask. It looks like he's been in, like, cold storage, kind of like Captain America. And I think he's going to come out of out of time from the 80s. And, you know, we'll, see, we'll maybe have an episode or two following him around. And then he's going to come and try and take over the Seven. And mm-hmm. I think Comlander's going to have to team up with Butcher and stuff like that to take him out because he's going to be the real threat. How did you guys feel about the bombshell at, at the end of episode three when Starlight decided, you know what, I'm just going to play ball. And she even like made it even worse by kissing Homelander. Yeah, Jesus Christ. I think um, 
I think uh, what's his name? What's the what's the main dude? Um, oh my god, Huey! I think Huey's gonna like lose his mind when he sees that kiss on TV. Like he's gonna go crazy. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean, I like it. I like that they're tying that into her childhood. That like she always has played the part on stage, and like she knows that's when she's on stage, she has to like bury her emotions. And I feel like that is going to start to have her go a little crazy, maybe a little Homelander like um, and kind of break because they're now starting to like give that uh, that ear ringing, whatever that uh, Homelander had before he was breaking to her. Yeah. And I I really think that with Supersonic hanging out, too, it's 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 just the weirdest situation ever. It's so uncomfortable. And I'm just. I'm afraid for what's what's going to happen next. I'm like I'm I'm wondering which superhero is going to die mm. in this in this next turn of events. <laughs> yeah, I wonder like Maeve has got to have some she's been like backseated for the first 3 episodes. I think we saw her for like what 2 minutes on screen. So yeah. I'm I'm curious what she's up to like, you know, she's obviously working with Huey and stuff like that to try and get dirt on Homelander or whatever, but yeah, I'm curious. That whole scene with uh what was your one's name? Was it Stormfront? Is that the yeah the Nazi one? Just her, <laughs> her like in the bed and stuff. Like she's only got one arm, but she's like jerking off Homelander and stuff. I was just like, this is just fucking ridiculous, dude. <laughs> what a show! <laughs> oh, dude, it's just so insane. It's such an insane show, and mm-hmm. like I, I, I'm just loving Homelander so much this season. Like you know the bit where he's. Uh, he's all depressed and he's lying on the couch naked and you actually see like he's got really skinny arms and stuff so i'm like oh the suit's <laughs> the suit's fake i'm like this is because i knew the suit was fake for the actual actor anthony Starr. i'm like i know the guy's not that big but i was like the fact that they actually wrote that into the story as well to the fact that he's actually kind of scrawny and they have the suit to make him look like superman i thought that was yeah. that was very clever i thought and <laughs> just uh then when he he hears that like you know when he gave that big speech where he's just like you know basically telling the world to go fuck themselves because he's like i am a god i am i'm the one like i'm the leader you know i may i shoot the cause and he's now free like i think it's a very it's it's very dangerous where he's going now because i think he realizes that he doesn't have a leash on him like and he can go and do whatever he wants and just the way he's being so sadistic towards like the deep and stuff like that is just crazy to me like I, yeah. I, just can't, I can't wait to see more man that stuff with yeah. the deep has been like huge this season bro they've been messing with that character yeah i completely it's forgot yeah it has been deeper <laughs> i completely <laughs> forgot um i forgot the whole story about him like with the whole mouth rape to starlight at the very beginning i i that i that i'd forgotten about that and I, it yeah. just it came rushing back i was like oh yeah yeah, yeah. that's why he left in the first place there was that whole scandal mm-hmm. like yeah 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 mm-hmm. So yeah, like it's it's interesting to see where that's going, and like his girlfriend just texted him like, just eat the fucking thing and all. <laughs> <You know? laughs> like, so... She she's just like, come on, we gotta get back here, just eat the bloody thing. <laughs> mm-hmm. oh, it's so messed up. It really is. Uh, what do you guys think? Of, what do you guys think about Stan though? After Homelander is basically saying like, I can do whatever I want. What do you think Stan's gonna do? Hmm. I think Stan's gonna get to a point where he still thinks he's in charge and like running things. And then, like, Homelander or even maybe Soldier Boy is going to just, like, clap him real quick. Like, it was nothing. And he's just dead. So do you think that, because I know at the end of episode three, Butcher and the boys say that they're going to use the Russians to get over to Russia because they think they're going to find Soldier Boy's body Mm -hmm. uh, or the weapon. They're looking for the weapon, which I think is actually kind of hilarious that they're doing that whole storyline that there's, like, a weapon because I don't know know if you know this or not, but Eric... Eric Kripke, the guy who developed the show, he also developed Supernatural. And in Supernatural, he had a storyline where there was a gun that could kill any demon. And like it's like it's just the same thing <laughs> happening again now. Like it's like there's a there's a weapon that can kill soups. Like I'm just like, come on, Kripke. You're better than this, bro. Yeah. <laughs> well I mean, and to, I gotta read the boys' comics. I'm waiting for the show to end so I can go read the comics because yeah. I feel like because I started with the show, like I don't wanna yeah. go read the comics till it's done. Cause I'm like the show got me into it. I'll let the show sh- tell the story before yeah. I go get annoyed about what they changed from the comics. Yeah, yeah, that's, <laughs> that's fair. That's fair. I'd do the same thing. Um, should we talk about Obi-Wan Kenobi now? I would love to talk about Obi-Wan Kenobi. Yeah. Oh. <sighs> so, yeah, I watched this episode twice. Um, the first time I watched it, there was a lot of kind of grabbing my girlfriend's arm and with excitement sort of moments in it you know when vader first showed up 
I've been like kind of visualizing and hoping that we would see Vader actually fully get put together for years. I've been wanting to see that. So the fact that we got to see at the start of the episode when we get to see Obi-Wan meditating and he's talking and, you know, he's trying to reach out to Qui-Gon. I was like, oh my God, if I hear Liam Neeson here, I'm going to freak out. Like, you know, and Mm -hmm. then, you know, we're, we're getting Vader getting put together and then we see the Mustafar scenes and stuff. I was like, this is God tier Star Wars right now. Like right at the start, the first 10 minutes of the episode, god tier i loved every moment of it it was incredible um and then like vader coming into the town when he's like finding kenobi and he's like cracking heads and you know killing people and all to try and get kenobi to come out of hiding because he knows he's there i'm like this is gripping amazing Mm -hmm. the quinlan voss Mm -hmm. reference blew my mind as well quinlan was a big character in like clone wars and stuff like that if anyone doesn't know he's like a jedi who has a real deep story in the comics and he basically starts off as a jedi he gets put on a mission to try and kill count dooku dooku turns him to the dark side he falls in love with um ventress who was uh dooku's apprentice and then ventress dies i think dooku kills ventress and then he turns back to the light side to try and basically avenge her because he falls in love with her crazy stories and like you know there's clone wars episodes with him and obi-wan working together and stuff and there's actually a picture um of him there's an image of him in episode one funnily enough where mm-hmm. he's si- he's sitting on tatooine and i think it's during when sabob was attacking um jar jar binks that scene mm-hmm. you can see him sitting in the background he's got the gold stripe across his face and stuff which was cool i didn't know that that was new information for me i only i only learned that this week which is crazy. I never knew that before. So Voss is such a, a cool character. Man, he could have really helped out, huh? Yeah, like, you know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> he was just chilling. <laughs> but yeah, like that that whole, the whole start of the episode was just absolutely amazing to me. I loved every minute of it. When like Quinlan got mentioned, I was like freaking out. I loved it. Um, but I just didn't like the fight between Obi-Wan and Vader. I thought it was just the choreography was terrible. I know Obi Wan's meant to be weak and inexperienced, but like, how do you go from being like one of the best swordsmen in the Jedi to fighting like that? Like, I know you've been ten years not using the Force and stuff, but like, do you lose your skills as like a swordsman? I, you know, it d- didn't really make any sense to me. Loved the bit with like Vader running him through the fire and stuff. I thought that was crazy. Um, then he like just tells the draw or tells the clones or the stormtroopers to go and pick him up and then basically the fire starts again and he's like oh i don't want to get him like i just thought what on my first watch i was just like what the hell is going on vader's suit can withstand lava like he's been submerged in lava on mustafar and it's been fine he's been at the depths of the sea it's fine he can walk around in space it's fine the suit is indestructible but he can't walk through fire just to pick up Obi-Wan or he can't use the force to pick him up and drag him across the flames or something. I don't know. Other than that, I loved, what? other than that, I loved the episode. Talk, talk to me. What did you think? Yeah, I would say like this episode is an improvement over like the feelings of the first two episodes I had. Like, I, I feel like they even like Revan in this one really stepped up her game. It's like, she's finding her character. Um, I, I, the most of our scenes were amazing. That, that throne room, like the all, Marvel throne room just looked stellar. See Invader again, putting together like it's just it's all great Star Wars that like we've been wanting to see forever. Um, I, I think when they get down to the planet, it gets a little kind of weird. Um, you know, like you, I, I don't like this character of of Kenobi that they're telling. I understand why they're getting it. I see a lot of people trying to like correct people, like we you just don't get it. I understand why they're making Kenobi the way he is. Mm-hmm. You know. He, the Kenobi he we knew died on Mustafar with Anakin. You know what I mean? Like he once he left that planet, he 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 left the old Kenobi behind yeah. because he he's a broken character who's hiding on Tatooine uh, and using Luke as an excuse to not be a Jedi anymore and like just kind of buried in himself. I get that. I don't like that character more than I like the idea of Kenobi keeping his skills sharp because he knows he has to protect Luke. Yeah. Like he he can barely fight Vader. He can barely use the force. He can't. He doesn't even know how to lie to stormtroopers anymore. Thank fuck that like nobody came for Luke in these ten years. And we're like, hey, let's go search Tatooine for Luke Skywalker. Yeah. Like, thank God because Kenobi would have been done nothing to help him. Yeah. He would have been useless. So I don't like that that much. But I see the I see what they're doing with his character, where they they want to take him on that journey 
of getting back to the Jedi. And you brought up Quinlan, and I'm sure, you know, I wouldn't be surprised if we get a, cam a cameo or even a couple episodes of, of Quinlan, like helping him relearn what it is to be a Jedi, mm -hmm. you know, showing him that you can still be a Jedi in this way and help people out, even though you run for the Empire. And I'm with you. The um, the lightsaber fight scene, um, you, you, you know, it's kind of, it's kind of breaking canon. Um, you know, it's canon that hasn't been like firmly established. They just kind of allude to it. It's like Vader has a line. When last I met you, you were the master and I was the apprentice. Now I'm the like we know that line, and that's like one of the greatest Star Wars lines that's so memorable. And then this last time we see them fighting, there is no way Kenobi is considered a master in this form. Like it is yeah. like that is breaking canon. Well, um, that is that is that's breaking canon. I think uh, what what yeah. we've just seen now confirms that they're going to fight again. Because well, to keep the canon, they need oh, Obi Wan needs to win a fight for that yeah. for that line to make sense. Obi Wan needs to fight again. So I think what's going to happen is, and it's what I predicted at the very start, we're going to get Obi Wan's going to lose. He's going to go but with his tail between his legs, and you know he's going to reconnect with the Force, and maybe he will learn from Cal Kestis or Quinlan Voss or the both of them, hopefully, and he's going to be in a bat to tank, I presume, and we're going to get like. Uh, this is what I hope we're gonna get um, scenes where we're gonna get flashbacks to the Clone Wars and stuff like that while he's in a tank. I think that'd be pretty sweet. Um, but yeah, they're gonna fight again. They have to, have to fight again. Yeah, I agree. Yeah, uh, but yeah. It, it's just if this the way this is the first time they've seen each other since Mustafar. Yeah, and it's mm -hmm. it just felt lackluster. It felt like Kenobi. We they've been saving his lightsaber, like turning that on. They've been saving that moment. Yeah. And he turns it on just because he doesn't know where Vader is. And he just like, there's no hero yeah. moment where he's like standing in front of Vader and like turns it on. Like, all right, we're going to fight. Yeah. He just mm -hmm. like, he's running it's away fair. to buy them time. It's just like, eh. I hated the running around. I hated the, and like, you know, he'd like run across like a big pile of dirt and he'd start running down the thing. And then Vader would just magically appear out in front of him. And I'm just like, oh, it was just, <laughs> it was hard. It was hard to watch. It was like my least favorite part of the entire series so far was, was that whole kind of, stupid running away and stuff like that I, I just thought it was ridiculous and like part of me thinks now on the second watch i'm kind of thinking like okay maybe vader's toying with him now like playing with his food before the kill like you know so that's why he lets him go but i don't know bro like it's like part of me thinks like you know vader has had nothing on his mind for 10 years other than finding kenobi and you have him sitting right in front of you and you're not gonna take him into you're gonna let him go like you're not gonna right. capture him like come on bro 10 years of your life he's literally turned you into a stump and you know you have to be constructed every day and come out of a tank like you know what i mean like the life that vader lives now is just pure like horror you know like they they go into it in depth in the comics but basically like he has to have like the top layer of his skin constantly like shaved off because he's rotting and like he's literally just constantly going through pain. So like you're telling me that the person who did that to you and you're like devoured by the dark side at this stage. You're telling me that the person is literally 20 feet away from you that's done that and you're going to let him go? I don't know. Doesn't add up for me, yeah. bro. Yeah, it seems like the the show really wants to uh not care so much about the canon and give as many plot holes as possible just to tell their own story, which is not it's not fair to the fans that have been waiting so long to see Obi-Wan. And, and I agree wholeheartedly, like, you know, Darth Vader should be picking up Obi-Wan and pulling him to him and just being like, you know what? I'm tired of you. But at the same time, we have to make it all the way to a new hope when, you know, he gets struck down. Hmm. And so like, it's so hard for us to, to, to believe this now, but I, I would say Hoffman when it, when it comes to the, when the last time we met, uh, I was but an apprentice, but now I'm the master. It, uh, I think I remember watching stuff saying that it was like he kind of worded it in a way to where you could say that he like they met many times before yeah. even getting to a new hope between the time that he was like Vader as like the robot, like the robotic android Vader and like a new hope. So that's one way you can explain it, but it still doesn't fix the fact that, you know, Obi-Wan is not fighting back as well as he should. I don't think 10 years gets rid of like all of your skills. You can clearly see that he has some skills, especially when he's uh, fighting in the prisoner cells just to find Leia. Yeah. Like he still has knowledge of, of his like Jedi Jedi skills and abilities. Um, and he has his tactics and it's just so weird. Um, I think it's just 
like I said in the previous podcast, that it's it feels like a cookie cutter situation. They're trying to force him to go in a direction when he should be going many directions at, at which point. Yeah. And um, the scenes with Leia, they they're nice. I like them. But once it gets to the point where it's an escort scene, it kind of falls apart, in my opinion, because mm. it's just it's not it's not fun. Nobody really likes, you know, escort missions. So it, it just doesn't feel as exciting. Um, I did, however, like the ride that they took with that Mole Man guy, which, uh, by the way, was played Zach by Braff. Zach Braff. I know, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I love Zach Braff so much, which, dude. Me too. And and I and I was like, oh, that's cool. I didn't even notice. And you know, those little tidbits are nice. But other than that, like the the story in itself for episode three, there were a few things that I like. There, uh, the thing with Reva though, like when she was force held um, by the fifth brother it didn't look you know unique or or believable like it literally just looked like she bent forward and just put her arms <laughs> out yeah. and it just it bugged me so bad yeah and it's, i know it's nitpicky it's low budget like it feels low budget and it's because it's a tv show and you know there there's problems on disney plus like i really feel at its core disney has problems with their shows on disney plus when it comes to either budget when it comes to writing i mean they're like the writing of the show is horrendous there's fucking four writers on this episode. Four writers. You know, when they have this scene, uh, like you're talking about, after she gets, like, you know, force pinned down on the table, and uh, the, the fifth brother's like, you're going to get what you deserve. She's like, I really hope I do. I really do. <laughs> yeah. I'm like, what? Yeah. Who approved this? And guess what? If you look at the producers, John or John Favreau isn't there. Dave Filoni isn't there. They're not writers. They're not producing this thing. Like, their fingerprints that made Mandalorian so good are not over this thing this you know as much as this is baked in star wars because all the characters it's like part it just doesn't kind of have that star wars feel to it it doesn't feel like like when rogue one comes along has nothing to do with jedi but it feels extremely like a star wars film this feels very light on what it is to be star wars cinematically um like there's no the like the cool you know transition scenes like it just doesn't have that dna to me um and i kind of wish this thing would just have been a movie instead of this tv show all yeah. Dave, all Dave gives a shit about right now is Ahsoka. Yeah, that's it his, better that's be fire, baby. bro. That's his baby. Yeah, yeah. Like Anna, Anakin's confirmed for that show as well. So like, yeah. Hay Hayden's gonna come back. They're gonna do like flashbacks, I'd say, to Clone Wars and stuff like that. I'm praying that we get some Clone Wars stuff in this show, but I would not be surprised if we didn't. So mm -hmm. one thing I wanted to talk about, and I won't go into specifics, but. There was a report this week, so there was leaks out for the end of the show originally, like a couple of weeks ago. And again, I read, I watched videos on it and needed to know, so because I, I, I kind of needed to know what I was getting into. You can't help with, yourself. Yeah, I can't, and it's fine. <laughs> I, I, it's fine. I, I am who I am, and that's it. But a report came out a couple of days ago that claimed that they are apparently changing the end to the show. So the original leaks are changing. So, and I won't talk about the original leaks just in case this new report isn't right and whatever they originally were happened. So I'll keep it all hush until the show's over. And then we can kind of go deep on it when the show's finished. Cause I'd love to, for, if it doesn't happen, I'd love to tell you guys the story and mm -hmm. see what you think of it, you know? But basically there's a rumor floating around. And I don't know if maybe you saw this on Twitter or whatever, but like a lot of people were talking about like Kenobi season two. And they're talking about how they're going to like potentially extend the story in some way. Now, some people were, like, trying to claim, like, oh, they're going to go into season two, so something's going to happen where, you know, there's a lot of people theorizing that maybe Reva is good this entire time, and she's actually a Jedi, and she's trying to infiltrate the Inquisitors, and maybe she's working with Quillen Voss and all this stuff. So, I don't know if that's, like, where they're maybe going to try and go with it. Maybe they'll do, like, a season, like, they'll, it won't be called Kenobi season two, but they'll do another show which will have, like, Reva in it, and maybe Kenobi in it, and stuff like that. What do you guys think of that? Like, would you like Reva's story to continue? Maybe her turn to the light side or, you know, what would you watch? Like, like, do you think it's a good idea for them to go into Kenobi season two? Like, surely if this show ends with Kenobi going back to Tatooine, he's, he can't leave Tatooine again, right? <laughs> like, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? That's just, that's just like... I didn't think he'd leave it in the first place, Fento, so he, he should, he <laughs> the gloves should, are off. He shouldn't have he left in the been. first place, but, like, I think it gets to be a little laughable if it's like, hey, season two's here, and it's like, yo, Obi, we've got another mission for you, you know? Like, let's go off planet again. <laughs> you know? I just think it's a bit <laughs> ridiculous. I, I understand why he's doing it now. You know, Leia is Anakin's other child. It makes sense. 
uh, why he would go off world. But you know, I don't think you could do that once, but not again. Not again. Hard, <laughs> to, hard disagree. Yeah, I don't know. Like, Bail Organa should have been the one to protect Leia. Yeah, like, right. hey, why don't I have the entire resources of Alderaan help me find this child instead of going to uh, the one of the Jedi's who's supposed to be in hiding? Like, it makes no sense. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And, and Finto, can you can you answer this for me? Um, is Le like Leia is force sensitive, isn't she? Yeah. Yeah, she is. She's, so she becomes a, quite a powerful Jedi for a very short time, and she doesn't right. doesn't like the order. Doesn't want like, and she wants to just run the resistance or whatever. Right. And and even though she doesn't exude any sort of force powers at the moment, like she should still have some sort of sense that could be coming from darth vader himself at this point since he's so close to her during this confrontation yeah and so I, I'm, I'm, I, yeah. I'm wondering how you felt about that i yeah i don't know like i don't think vader and i think hoffman i think you kind of theorized something on this that you think maybe like yoda is his yoda's idea is to, or his like what he's using the rest of his power right now to do is to like cloak luke and leia mm -hmm. um and maybe that's why when vader is so close he can sense and he can sense uh obi-wan but he can't sense leia because like he thinks that padme is dead so he do, he doesn't at this point know that he even has any children you know what i mean mm -hmm. so let alone there being two she he, he always knew that she was pregnant but never knew that they were carrying twins that's only found out at the very end so if you think about it from anakin's point of view he's accidentally killed his wife and his sole mission in life in legends and in the comics going after episode three is for him to one find and kill kenobi and his second mission is to try and revive padme try and bring her back to life that's his they're his goals in life he doesn't want to do anything else and yeah i think i think i love that idea that maybe yoda is using all of the force that he has on dagobah to just mask the two of them from the force kind of like what sidious does by masking himself from the jedi back in the prequels you know it's mm -hmm. like he was literally under their noses the entire time so maybe he's using some sort of force power just to mask everything like mask his own identity or hide his force Fucking i actually saw something scent. about that um <laughs> or whatever <laughs> i don't yeah, know this you force know. set like it's mm, crazy it's season <laughs> yeah you know what i mean you know what i mean there, well there's there's apparently in the comics that there's an inhibitor that that the sith use to prevent like the the jedi from knowing that they're sith or like that they're force sensitive people and they built it like underneath the Jedi Temple, apparently. I've and heard. So that's why it was. <laughs> I've heard this like before. That was... Yeah, there's rumor that there's a Sith Temple under the Jedi Temple on Coruscant, and that the Palpatine had been working on building that over over time, and even Plagueis before him, and so on. Yeah, I have heard that theory before. I think it's a cool idea. It's really cool. Mm -hmm. <laughs> really cool. It's just weird how like you can hold this object and it's like, okay, we're gonna cloak you. We're we're good. Yeah, it just it, <laughs> bye bye, baby. But again, like even like when Palpatine, like Palpatine has been off world plenty. So it's not as if he's like sitting on top of the Sith temple and he's like, I'm cloaked now. You know what I mean? Like there's plenty of scenes, like he's in Naboo in episode one and, you know, he's surrounded by Jedi. You know what I mean? So like, it's, mm -hmm. I don't know. I don't really buy it, but yeah, it's a cool idea. I like the idea. Yeah. The show's a mess though. If you think about it in terms of lore, bro, mm. how does Vader let Leia go back to live on Alderaan? Like no problem. Like, he knows Kenobi was the one helping them. And, like, he's just going to let them, like, bail Organa and Leia just, like, go back and be cool until A New Hope. That feels so off to me for Vader, no? Yeah, like, mm -hmm. I think the the idea that a lot of people have of, like, Reva turning good doesn't really make a lot of sense. Because then, what if she was good, why would she put Leia in danger? And yeah. I, she doesn't actually know that Leia is Anakin's daughter. He's just like, oh, this Bail Organa guy has connections to Kenobi. Let's kidnap her, his daughter. Not realizing that he's actually kidnapping Anakin's daughter, which I think is mm -hmm. hilarious. But yeah, I don't know. Like, I, I just, you know, I don't, I, I don't see where that whole storyline's going. Like, you know, it's like if Vader gets anywhere near Leia and doesn't like realize that, like, you know, she's force sensitive and it's like his blood. I think that's just outrageous. You know what I mean? Yeah. Right? Outrageous. Like, yeah. the second that he comes across Luke, he knows Luke is his son. Straight away. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? And I think there's there's comic books that talk about a time between episodes four and five where I think they 
come close contact or something like that and i think that's where he figures it out or something like that and i think it lines up with episode five because i think if i I haven't watched uh, empire strikes back in so long but i think there's a time in it where like you first hear them talking about luke but it's kind of gathered as if he already knew it's not brand new information as they talk about it if you know what i mean like the son of skywalker he says or something like that so like they did that storyline in the comics and i think it was vader just coming into close enough contact with luke and then realizing that it's his son Mm -hmm. yeah yeah i'm scared i'm scared bro i'm scared yeah (laughs) because you know reading the comics and stuff you really get a sense that they respected the, the the lanes they had to drive in yeah and like the very hard barriers they had to tell a story and then you get to like these Disney Plus shows and they're like, eh, maybe not. Yeah, yeah. maybe. And then we got the writers coming out and be like, no, bro, like canon we is We respect everything. the canon. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And canon I'm like, is everything. I'm sorry. Excuse me? <laughs> but like, but really though? Like, yeah. Yeah, really though? Yeah. Uh, because this just does, you know, it's, it's the question at the end of this is going to be, was it worth it? Was it worth it to make a Kenobi show, rewrite canon, reestablish how the order of everything was going to go? Uh, because I don't care what they say, if it's established or not there was an understanding like there's an understanding mm-hmm. of how things went between episode three and a new hope. Yeah. Uh, and they are messing with that. They're, they are changing that uh, because, you know, I think I've talked to Finto about this. You don't think authors and would have wanted to tackle this before. You don't think they would have loved to do books on Kenobi going off world and fighting Vader. They would have loved to do that, but they didn't. The things that George Lucas greenlit were Kenobi just being on Tatooine yeah. and just dealing with Tatooine problems. That's it. Like there, there's a reason why George Lucas didn't want to do this, uh, or didn't let people do these stories because it, one, it you know didn't happen, or two, showing us that this happened in between it lessens a new hope. Yeah, yeah, and and it's it's one of those things where like now that Disney has the rights to all of these you know Star Wars films and whatnot, they're like, well, what kind of stories do do we have to tell? It's like okay, well we did Mandalorian, that was great, but I mean why don't we try to fill in some of the blanks? And I think that just ruins it for all the movies. Just like you said, Hoffman, mm-hmm. like you don't need to fill in the blanks. And it's, and it's like both Finto and Hoffman has said in the past, like go a thousand years in the future, a thousand years in the past and just leave the Skywalker saga alone. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And just, just let it be. This show could have been about Quinlan Voss. Like, I think it's, there's an actor, I can't think of his name right now, but there's an actor who's been like kind of rumored to be on this show and they didn't know what role he was going to play. And he kind of looks like he could be a Quinlan Voss. So I presume we're going to get to actually see Quinlan in live action. Like they wouldn't name drop him if they weren't going to bring him in, you know. So mm-hmm. I think he's going to come in. But like why would they, like they could just tell this story about him, about Quinlan and maybe Cal Kestis or something like that. And then maybe for an episode or two, they go to Tatooine and they they find Kenobi. You know what I mean? But Kenobi never leaves Luke's side. Like that would have been so good. You know, yeah. you don't call the show Obi Wan Kenobi. You call it something else, but you know, give you McGregor like two hours of time on Tatooine or something. You know what I mean? Like, do the whole first two episodes the the same way. Like, you know, you have Obi Wan, we see what he's up to, and then you have like episode three, Quinlan comes in and like consults with him and so on, and then we go and follow Quinlan. Like, you know, mm-hmm. Obi Wan stays on Tatooine. I think that'd be and, a really cool way of doing it, and that would have just I not agree. broke not broke canon at all. You know. Yep. Mm-hmm. I'm going to call it right now. Quinlan Voss is being brought on this show so Reva can kill him. Jesus <laughs> Christ. Because she, she, can't, she can't kill Kenobi. She can't fucking kill Kenobi. Darth Vader can't kill Kenobi. But know who they can kill? Quinlan Voss, who's like a really mm-hmm. dope character that everyone loves if you know deep Star Wars stuff. Like, you know, not yeah. deep, but... Yeah. Uh, you know, so they're, she's going to murk Quinlan, dude. 100%. Oh, bro, I pray that doesn't happen. Oh, my God. I can't wait for oh. this show to be over so I can talk about those leaks. And I pray that those leaks... <laughs> Are, like I pray the show's different because I'd love to talk about those leaks, uh, mm-hmm. but I'll wait. I'll wait well, till the end. And even like when you guys talk about Reva possibly being like an actual Jedi instead, I I can see how that would work considering the fact that she does not seem like an Inquisitor at all. She doesn't even seem like a Sith. Like I don't believe her character at all. So if she's not a Jedi by the end of this, I'm gonna hate it. Like <laughs> I, in well, like, terms of like just the the acting i think it's i think in my opinion i think it's pretty much confirmed that she was in the the temple on or during order 66 you know so i i i don't really like the character but i suppose i think we need to focus on her for one episode get the backstory get to how she got to be an inquisitor or whatever like we they need to fill that fill that hole 
in the story like we need to know mm. maybe by the end of like a Riva episode maybe we'll actually know maybe we'll like her come out coming out the other side of it if we see her journey but right now it's just she's just so annoying and it's like I, I, I have no connection to her whatsoever because I just don't know anything about her like you know she's just yeah. she's, it's just a really they, annoying character they have not done enough to establish her character and make you feel any type of way towards her like when she just like you know oh I tracked the manifest and the sent a probe yeah. I know what planet they're on I would have loved to seen her do that I would have loved the show to kind of explore how she is actually one of the better inquisitors yeah. because she's like a great detective and knows how to find people th- and uses her force powers to find people. I think she and has act- that force. She ability. show that. Yeah. I think that's one of her, her, you know, the way everyone has a gift in the force. Like some people mm-hmm. can see the yeah. future. Some people like Cal Castus when he touches something and it's the same as Quinlan. Quinlan has the exact same power. When they touch an object, you know, they learn the history of it and they learn about the people who owned it and so on. So, and it looks like Reva has some sort of power that she can like see how things work or something like that. And um, so like when, you know, when she finds the secret passageway, she just looks at the handle and she knows straight away by looking at it that it's that it's a secret doorway and stuff. So that whatever she she's able, that's her power. But uh, yeah, I would love that to be explained more. I feel mm-hmm. like she has kind of like Kylo Ren's where he she can like read people's thoughts. Yeah, she and has that I think that that's what well, they yeah. – yeah, and that's how she probably knows who Anakin is, right, or Darth Vader is. Um, it just – like, yeah, I would love to see them actually show her using her force powers, being an Inquisitor. Like, take the time to show us that. Yeah. You got enough time in these episodes. Believe me, you can attack on a little bit uh, and show us that. And I'd actually like her character a lot more instead of her just knowing exactly where to walk because, like – it helps the script move along faster. She's like, oh, I know what house they're in. This one. Boop, 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 boop. Yeah, they better explain how she knows because I, I don't think it's good enough either that, you know, she uses a force power on Vader to go into his mm-hmm. mind. There's no way. Like a right. young a young Jedi or Sith is going to be able to crack Anakin's mind. I'm sorry, no, he's way too powerful. So they better explain how she knows he's Anakin. You know, because yeah. if, if, if they do a scene where like she's like talking to him and she's like, cracking into his brain and like reading his mind and viewing his memories i'm gonna fucking lose it man because that's just <laughs> so stupid like you know there's yeah. no way that would happen and I, I only think that because i have no idea why they would else they would bring up that she has that power yeah. she hasn't used it in the show so why why are they established that her that she's good in that in the force yeah. there's no reason to establish that and like the grand inquisitor talked about how good she was in it you know yeah, like yeah. Mm-hmm. oh bro but, and yeah. one of the one of the one of the bigger things that I think is really lacking is the is the lightsaber duels and the the inquisitors not even showing any form of, of skills. It's just this, <laughs> you know, ser- seek and destroy kind of like mission, which doesn't even involve like a fight whatsoever. It's just so it's so much like, oh, we found him, but we can't touch him in a sense. And I, I just I hate that, man. Like, bro, I, thought- I want like Reva's Reva's parkour was so like lackluster. <laughs> You know, I would have loved to see her go up on the rooftop and actually fight some of the people that were blasting. At least pull up the lightsaber and just be like, you know, blocking on the way, showing that she doesn't even need to look at them. She's just like going by and just beelining while Mm -hmm. blocking all those blaster shots. Bro, I I genuinely thought when we were getting this show, I heard Inquisitors. I'm like, okay, this is how we have Obi-Wan using his lightsaber. He can't be fighting Vader all the time, but maybe he'll like start chopping down brothers and sisters from the inquisitory like you know and i thought that's where it was going but like by the looks of it obi-wan can't wouldn't at the moment obi-wan would lose a fight against reva right now you know what i mean like that's Mm -hmm. the the Mm -hmm. the state that he's in so i really think that we're gonna get like a whole bunch of like battle scenes and he's gonna reconnect with the force he's gonna heal he's gonna like we're gonna hopefully have memories for like flashbacks and then i'd say we're gonna also get him finally communing with Qui-Gon. Yeah. Uh, the back-to-tank stuff has got to stop in Star Wars. It's too much. I know. It's too much, bro. There's too many back-to-tanks. I just feel that's where it's going, though. Yeah, I, really I know. Do. I think you're right. Yeah. I think you're right, bro. Yeah, yeah. and I think um, we'll get Vader back in the back in a tank as well, and we might even get some Anakin flashbacks. Like, yeah. Yeah. And yeah. I will give him the credit. During that fight scene, when Kenobi is like, what have you become? And Vader drops that line. I am what you made me like yeah. fucking sweet line right there. So cool. That was yeah. like nailed it. Yeah. Uh, one other question is who do you think is in that robot, bro? Someone's in that fucking yeah, robot. I, I, I was Someone's gonna, in there. I was going to mention this. So a lot of people are saying it could be like Rex or Cody. It's a clone. It's like a Tamara Morrison clone. So I think uh-huh. it's, it's going to be a, a well-known clone. who's in it. Cause you know, when he has like the hammer behind his back, 
Like, it's mm-hmm. like, that's not a droid move. Like, we know yeah. it's human. And, like, his suit, like, mm-hmm. someone was... I, I saw someone breaking it down, and they had, like, pictures at the back of his legs, and it's like, that looks like clone armor and stuff. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah 100%. I think it's going to be, cool. like, Cody or something. And they had to tell us, like, three times, oh, they're not allowed to communicate. Yeah, like, yeah, oh, we yeah. get it. Who's in there? Please tell <laughs> <Yeah>. us. <laughs> exactly. Oh, yeah, don't mind him. He won't be talking. But <laughs> <laughs> Like, three different people said that in the episode, bro. Yeah. I heard some people saying it might be one of the Bad Batch. Which could be, you know, the That'd big one. What's what's the big dude's mm. name? I can't think of his name now. I don't know. I the don't big, watch Bad Batch. The big Although brute guy. He, there's a big brute guy. And it kind of, the way the robot's moving around and all, like he kind of looks like a big kind of stocky dude. So it could be the uh, the brute from Bad Batch. Which would kind of make sense because they're like launching Bad Batch season two. And, you know, that, Rekka. That, Rekka, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Rekka. People, people are saying him or maybe Rex or Cody or something like that. Yeah, so I, I think it's going to be one of them for sure. Yep, that makes sense. Yeah, and uh, to to finally tack on at the very end, Finto, when you were talking about season two, um, I would say that I think it would if they do decide to do a season two, I think it would work um, that they do the last ten years in like a two year increment, like for each episode, and just kind of like show the like as he's aging, as it's getting further along the lines. Oh, sorry, you mean then... yeah, yeah, you mean like the years mm. leading up to just before A New Hope. So yeah. how he turns into Alec Guinness, basically. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that, 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 that would make sense. I'd like to see that. Um, and as well, like, that's going to tie into, like, Rebels and stuff, because like, we have a scene with Rebels with Kenobi fighting Darth Maul, and he literally kills him with one swipe of his lightsaber. So it's like, between now and then, he must get all his Force powers back <laughs> and, you yeah. know, become a Master <laughs> Swordsman again, because he takes Darth Maul down with one swipe of his lightsaber. It's... You know, so mm-hmm. there's 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 a disconnect there. Like, you know, that's the, he's got to come back. And that's what makes me think that in the next, like, two episodes of the show, we're probably going to see a lot of battle tanks and a lot of healing and a lot of reviving. And then Kenobi's going to be back on point. He's going to be ready to go in and fight, like, the championship. It's going to be like a Rocky movie, bro. He's going to come in and get that win back, like, you know? Yeah, I really <laughs> I really do see it going that way. Um, Yeah, ha- absolutely. You know how scared I was that when they said, I have a pilot waiting... That they were gonna bring in solo, <laughs> like that's how mad. disrespectful they are to the lore of this <laughs> universe. Yeah, yeah, I really was like, are they bringing solo here? Like, there's no fucking way, bro. Yeah, and um, Hay- Hayden Christensen was speaking in an interview there this week and mentioned that he would love to do a Vader series. Um, oh yeah, because he's like, there's so much story to tell about Vader and what he's up to, and I think that's the winner. Like, I love Obi-Wan Kenobi. I do. I love him. Obi-Wan's amazing. But I think if you got, like, a six-part mini limited series about Vader going around hunting Jedi, I think that would just be so cool. You know, he's going to these, like, distant planets, and he's, like, searching down Force sensitives. And kind of like the story, if you played the Force Unleashed games back in the day, like, that whole storyline of him finding the young, the young like, Force-sensitive Jedi and training him and manipulating him to the dark side. And then we get Starkiller, and Starkiller's... Starkiller, they said, like, George basically said that Starkiller would be what Luke Skywalker would have been if he turned to the dark side. That He's that kind of powerful, so he's, like, the dark side version of Luke. So, like, you know what I mean? He's taking down Star Destroyers with the Force and everything like that. So, if they... I don't think they would ever go down the Starkiller route, but if they did, like, some cool storylines like that, I think a Vader show could really pop off, and you'll have Hayden there the whole time. He's just dying to put the suit on as much as he possibly can. Um, you know, correct. I, I'm sorry. Go ahead, Alex. Oh, just just a quick. Correct me if I'm wrong, Fento. Um, isn't Star Killer the original last name that was going to be given to Luke? That's and, right, like, yeah. Anakin's family. Yeah, it was. Yeah, his name was Luke Star Killer originally, and then they changed it to Skywalker. <laughs> yeah, they should have made that Ray's last name. You know? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm Ray Star Killer. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> uh, I think that, I would love a Vader series. I just started reading the comic books. Uh, the I got I just picked up like the first issue of it, uh, and I'm so impressed with how well they tie it into the uh, four, five, and six, and like use those as guardrails. I think they should do a Vader show in between, like episode uh, five and, or episode four and episode five, and like you know lose cover those because you know the comic books pick up with Vader having to go to Palpatine after he lost the Death Star, yeah. and like that's such a cool way to start a story, you know, yeah, yeah. like Vader on his knees you know, at the mercy of the uh, emperor because he fucked up. Yeah. Uh, so I think, I think them jumping forward and doing that is more intriguing to me 
than this time period uh, where they've had Solo and Rogue One and Andor. Yeah. Like, that stuff's fun, but it's so jam-packed. Like, I would like to get stuff in between mm-hmm. uh, New Hope and that, and if they do it by the comic books, which, like, absolutely respect the movies and don't break canon. Yeah, yeah, mm-hmm. for sure. Yeah, I like the idea of that. Um, you know, I, I, I think they need to, like... I know, like, they obviously have a plan right now with a bunch of projects like Andor and all this stuff, which is still taking place in the Skywalker saga, but they do need to get away from it. So I don't know. Mm-hmm. Like, I would love to see a Vader show, but at the same time, I'm thinking, Jesus, is this another kind of 18 months to two years that we're going to be stuck in the in the, the Skywalker saga, you know? And I think if mm-hmm. we're going to be stuck in the Skywalker saga for something, something like Vader, I think would be worth it. But yeah. yeah, part of me just wants to get the hell away from it. Let's go back to the Old Republic. Let's go... F- a thousand years into the future and you know yoda mm-hmm. and vader are just whispers in the wind they're just stories you know like i think that's that's the winner yeah i think there's a cool story to tell like after uh the last sequel that like there's been so much instability that the entire galactic empire just everything collapses you know yeah. and so i think there's a lot of cool stories you can tell there um i thought they were gonna tell break out some like huge thing in celebration like the next trilogy is going to the old republic yeah. Or even like, fuck it, it's going to the High Republic. Yeah. Like, whatever it is, I thought that was going to be the big move in Celebration. It totally was not. Yeah, dude, uh, like, two years in a row The only thing now. we got was the Skeleton Crew. Like Two years in a <laughs> row now, they haven't released any Star Wars movie news at any of the big events, like on May 4th or at Celebration. Like, they haven't done it for two years now, and it's so crazy, because everyone was saying, there has to be a movie coming out next year. There has to be. they got to be, like, launching something, like, and giving us something on the sly or whatever. But, like... Uh, I saw like I think it was a Taika's movie isn't going to be coming out till like 2027 or something crazy like that Ooh. like you know so yeah like I don't know and like they're talking about giving Ryan uh, Ryan Johnson a, a trilogy of his own and I'm like uh you know where's <laughs> when's that going to be based like you know like I think if you're giving him free reign to do whatever he wants that cannot be in the Skywalker saga because we've seen what he did there like you know you gotta <laughs> you gotta give him something either way in the future give him a blank slate and just let him go to go to town like you know give him um, the Vader show no <laughs> Jesus Christ bro come on he'll be no, good no no he'll no. subvert her yeah no no no, no, no. god no um, um I I think uh I think they've just taken a lot of the feedback that we've like gotten that we've given them about like the 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 sequel trilogy that they're just trying to take a step back and they're like, well, let's let's just do some small shows. We'll try to figure something out and then we'll make some movies again. I've heard, they, I've they heard, really need to take a step back. I've heard they love the sequel trilogy and they want to do like 10, 11, 12. Like, you know, they want to keep the story going, but so many fans don't, you know, and mm-hmm. I suppose if it was the same with the prequels, like, you know, if you were to ask Star Wars fans in 2005, do you want to see like you know, episodes 3.5 and, like, storylines in between that and the originals, they'd probably say, absolutely not. Let's just move on, like, you know. So Star Wars fans just are really toxic and just never happy. And that's just the way it is, you know. It is. That's just the Mm -hmm. way it is. So I really hope that, you know, Mando Season 3, they announced, is going to be coming out in February, I believe. Uh, Ahsoka is going to be, like, April or May or something like that. Like it'll be pretty much directly after. I'm really looking forward to those two shows. I think they're going to be absolute fire. Um, and then maybe we get a Vader show and that might just follow off the back of uh, Ahsoka or something like that. And I think that's the winner. Like, I think that'd be crazy. Um, but I just think after they do that, I think they need to get, get the hell away from it. <laughs> Any, anytime I hear, <laughs> anytime I hear something show, it just reminds me, like makes me think it's a sitcom. Yeah. <laughs> like Vader walks walks through the door. Oh, that yeah. Vader! Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> John Williams comes in with like a sick bass line. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, guys, yeah, I think that's uh, probably a good good point to end it for the week. Um, obviously, next episode of the podcast is going to be episode sixty four. We're going to have. Ooh. The first episode of Miss Marvel to talk about. We're going to have the next episode of Oh We Want to talk about. We're going to have the next episode of The Boys to talk about. So plenty plenty going on yes um, it's exciting you guys decide is... for miss marvel I, I, yeah, I am i am i, I will I, am. I'll, I'll watch it and do you know what they put out a, a kind of clip there kind of interviewing the girl who's playing her and she was speaking about how she basically is the real life uh kamala khan like she grew up like loving miss marvel dressing up as her going to school and all this stuff and that kind of made me more intrigued about the character like more intrigued mm-hmm. about the project because it's like this girl is actually living 
the story in real life, which is crazy. So that makes me want to kind of see it a bit more. So I am excited to talk about it next week. And I think, yeah, I hope it's going to be. She took a shot at Kevin Feige and I love her for it. What did she say to him? <laughs> she goes, well, I don't think the MCU is 616. It'll always be the uh, 1999 to me. And I'm like, that's my girl. That's my girl. I'm watching the show now. I'm in. Yeah, she got the sweaties. She got them on her side. <laughs> that's amazing, guys. Um, guys, if you're listening to us on Spotify, make sure you hit the notification bells and follow the channel if you're watching us on YouTube here. Like the video. Subscribe to the channel. Turn on the noti bells. Leave us a comment below. Let us know what you think of what we were talking about. How are you liking the boys? How are you liking Obi-Wan? And uh, yeah, we'll see you next week. Bye. Bye Have a good one, everyone. <laughs>